Um, so I'm very glad to be here. I'm very glad to be at the second issue of uh, Daily Photo Festival. I'm very happy also to, also to see a lot of people from Bombay, a lot of familiar faces. It's really nice to see that the Bombay crowd is here. <laughs> There's so much things happening right now in Bombay. Actually, you should check the photographers actually who are coming up right now from the city. It's amazing. It's uh, vibrant, actually, and a uh, lot of good, uh, nice photography coming from, the, from Bombay. Um, yeah, I've been here almost a bit less than half of my life. I've been in India for 15 years. I've learned photography here in India with Prabhu Dodas Gupta. Actually, I used to assist him when he used to live in Bangalore. Um, when it comes to my artistic pra practice, when it comes to my photography, I feel very much Indian, actually. Whatever I have done, whatever I have learned in photography is from India, actually. And the subjects that I deal with, uh, I guess also the way I express myself through photography, uh, in a way, actually, I think is a bit Indian. Um, so I'm going to take, I mean, this is my second project. The one which is shown as a solo show at the, the Alliance Francaise is my, is my third project. And my first project was done four, year, four years ago. Um, four years ago, I decided to speak. Oh, yeah, before that, sorry, I'm a bit uh, uh, lost. Whatever I do in my projects, whatever I deal with, whatever I speak about, actually, in my artistic practice as a photographer, deals with uh, the small town India, deals with uh, the villages, uh, what I call, I mean, I'm using an Urdu word for that, which is the Mufusil. Um, it's basically where uh, I find that uh, it's a place in India where, I mean, it's not very well documented. When it's documented through the arts and through photography, it's uh, through this, its extremes. And what I want to do, actually, what I want to say through my art, actually, is to speak about the mundane, the daily life, I mean, what's happening uh, every day. Um, my first project was on the uh, men, the body of the Indian men, actually, living in the Mufusil. Um, I find them, in a weird way, actually, uh, very sensuous. Uh, the way they use their body, uh, that wealth that they have in the usage of their body, is uh, very interesting. So that was a project that I've done four years ago. And from this project, I wanted to speak from their sensuality, the, I mean, being, them being sensuous. I wanted to speak about their sexuality and the way they express their sexuality the relationship between the sexes also, which is very interesting. So I started working on it, creating visuals, uh, photographing, um, but I couldn't get the thing right, actually. I couldn't do it well. Um, I just found, I mean, I could understand very well where they're coming from in terms of sexuality, actually. I mean, I speak Hindi, I interact a lot with the people from the country also, but creating a visual myself, photographing it, was a bit of a fallacy, actually. I mean, there was a lot of my own sexuality that I was projecting onto the visuals. And I didn't make many, I mean, much pictures, actually. So I kind of reached a dead end here. I didn't know where to go, actually. I knew I wanted to deal with that project, but I didn't know where to go ahead. Uh, at the same time, in Bombay, um, it happened uh, with a friend of mine. We were sitting outside in a restaurant, and she told me, look at this man. He's taking a photo of me with his mobile phone. I remember we confronted, confronted him. We went, we erased the picture from the mobile phone. But at that time, it's, I just found it a bit weird, actually, because this man was almost four or five meters away from my friend. And there was, in terms of voyeurism, there was nothing much there, actually, to photograph. Uh, it happened many more times, actually. I'm a fashion photographer also. It happened during uh, one of my shoots when one of the light men also photographed a friend of my model. On and on and on, I heard those stories of women getting photographed with mobile phone on the street. So I found it interesting because here I had uh, my project, actually. In a way, I mean, those men photographing women on the street were expressing and dealing uh, with their sexuality with their mobile phone, with their camera. So I found it very interesting, and I was curious to look at those pictures to see how they were photographing those women, how they were expressing their sexuality. Whatever happens now in the digital age, I mean, 
photos created, photos uh, generated with cameras or mobile phone, end up on the internet. I mean, right now the internet is a huge reservoir. I mean, it's like a huge uh, cold storage of uh, digital visuals, actually. And those photos shot on the street with a mobile phone will find their way, actually, on the internet. So I started searching. I mean, it's quite easy, actually. You go on Google, you type wire, uh, streets, India, etc. You learn to know that they call those type of photos candids. It's candid photography for them, which is very interesting because it's very close to what we do uh, as street photographers. And so I found very quickly Indian porn website where you had photo of women shot on the street, and it was all mixed with uh, other type of visuals, any type of photography, actually. I mean, in terms of editing, porn website is a bit of random, actually, uh, for the visuals. Uh, I started search, I mean, it was not good enough for me, actually. I mean, because it was completely disconnected from the reality of our society, of the Indian society. So I started searching further. And I found um, forums. There are a lot of forums right now in India meant for young men uh, where they're going to exchange about their private life, or about problems at home, etc. They're going to exchange about gadgets, mobile phone, um, Bollywood. And in those forums, you have a huge porn section, actually, where they're going to. And porns are. Uh, porns. Forums are very interesting because forums, basically, I don't know if you've been in any forum, actually, you have a thread. Somebody starts a thread with a subject and people reply to it. And there, I found those photos, those candid photos. And they were all there. There were a lot of them, actually. And it was amazing, actually. It was very interesting for me because I really had the background. Uh, I could get into their mind. I mean, one man will put a photo of that he shot somewhere in, uh, in his village and people will react to it, and they write about it, or they react to it with a different photo. And really, I mean, in terms of um, getting the background of their way of thinking, and why they were doing it, and how they were doing it, for which purpose, I had everything there in those forums. So I started, I mean, it lasted almost four months, where I started collecting the photos, one after the other. I collected 10,000 photos, it's a huge, um, it was very grilling, actually, very difficult four months because I was really with those men. I was really living, reading uh, what they had to write, actually, about the photos. But I did it, and I collected 10,000 photos, which I put together as a body of work. And this body of work is um, a body of work of a photographer. I don't see, I mean, see, for this project, I haven't shot any photo, but I still work as a photographer. It's really my expression. That's my way of un understanding photography, camera, etc. So the project that I'm going to show you uh, is an edit, a curation of those 10,000 photos put together in chapters uh, with a bit of meaning behind also in order for us to understand um, what's happening right now in our society actually and this uh, aggression that the women have to face every day. This project was done before the rape case, actually. It was done two and a half years ago, actually. Now it's even more contemporary because of what's happening. Uh, but it was done before that. But for me to speak about the transgression towards women uh, in the street level, in their daily life, is very important, actually. Something that I connect a lot with. Um, I do understand. And I do share also the difficulty that is to be a woman right now in India. The fact that the gaze of the Indian male on the street level affects you so much, affects the woman, affects us also, the boyfriends or the husbands. Um, it affects the way women understand their body, the way they love their body, they understand their own sexuality. And for me, it's really important to speak about that. So I'll start here with the first photo. 
What I wasn't prepared with actually also, I mean, before really going, I'm sorry, I'm speaking a bit before because it's very important. This project was, it's a bit difficult to show in front of the crowd because it's a bit of a, a dangerous topic actually. So I'd rather speak before and then we can go through the visual. Um, this project also, I wasn't really prepared because some of the photos are beautiful and they are kind of well composed also. So on, um, there are two ways of looking at this project actually and both of them are equally important for me. The first is um, speaking about this the, the degradation towards the woman. The second also what I have found out actually and you'll see and we'll develop that subject later on when we look at the photos. It's uh, also speaking about photography and vernacular photography and speaking about the way they use their camera because uh, imagine I have 10,000 photos and some of the photos are very close to what we do as photographers. And what I have realized actually um, looking at those photos, uh, it's like an empirical laboratory of photography. It's like trial and error. One guy will find a way of photographing and it will be copied and on and on and on. So, and now we can start looking at the photos. See here, when I was speaking about what they do and what we do in street photography, and uh, it's, it's very uncanny actually because uh, the strategies that they have developed on their own, I mean, that group of guys shooting women on the street is very close to the strategies which were developed for street photography actually. Now if you look at that, I mean, you can see, I'm quite, I can imagine that man waiting for uh, those two women to pass in front of the bikini, uh, the, the, the model in bikini, actually. And that kind of transposition of idea between the half-naked foreign woman and the boca-clad woman also. And at the same time, it's a kind of interesting shot. The cropping is done by them. I haven't touched up uh, the photos. Uh, whatever you see is as it is, actually. What I have done is sometimes remove the noise to make it printable, but that's it. Once again, in terms of composition, I wasn't really ready actually to see these kind of visuals actually. Some of them are very, very powerful. And it's uh, in a weird way very disturbing for me to see that they use the camera very well. And it's... Uh, <laughs> And it's kind of uh, inherent beauty to those photos. Um, you look at this photo, actually, you'll see, I mean, most of the photo doesn't have much nudity, actually. They are part of pornographic forums, but there's hardly any, I mean, I have perhaps one photo of a cleavage that will be the maximum. And some of the photo, I mean, seem so random, actually, they're shots from so far. I mean, here I don't, I mean, you, visually, when you look at this photo, there's nothing sexual in nature. But what you have to understand and what I have understood while reading the forum, while uh, reading what they had to write about it, actually, is for them, uh, taking a, a photo of a woman on the street, the act of stalking a photo, the, uh, a photo, a woman, sorry, the act of taking a photo against somebody's will, is uh, for them like a sexual act. For them, they write about it, actually. The act of taking a photo of a woman on the street is a sexual act. And for them, it's as much as important than the, the result, actually. But really, inv invading the privacy of somebody, getting into somebody's uh, intimacy, is for them a sexual act that they can't do otherwise, but they do it through the camera. So once again, I mean, as photographers, I mean, it's kind of interesting the way they use the cameras also. Uh, a lot of the photo, uh, the intent behind shooting the photo is really uh, very close to a rape, actually. It's like a visual rape, something that they won't do phys physically, but they do it by the proxy of a camera. And here, that's exactly that. But at the same time, you have photos which are very evocative also and very powerful. What I have understood also and seen through the forums and looking 
at the photos and looking at the writing and the comments. Uh, for them, you had two types of women, actually. You have the women that they interact with daily, the women of the household, the women, uh, the sister, the wife, uh, the mother. And then you have the woman from outside, the unknown woman. So here in this chapter, I'm putting uh, photos of uh, where the approach and the way the, the aesthetics also, it's a bit more uh, links to the emotion, it's linked to the emotion actually, it's more linked to this kind of, uh, it's kind of soft, kind of romanticized, sorry. See, I mean this kind of food, and that's the maximum um, skin that you're going to have in all the project. Uh, but if you look at it, I mean it's really something that you could, I mean, could be a memory of your childhood, your mother preparing the chai. I really like the inclusion of so of the chai behind the stove, the uh, afternoon light. It's kind of soft. The petticoat, you know, I mean, it's kind of this kind of um, memories that you can have as a child, or so you've been looking at women around you, or so in your household. The wife and dressing. Very powerful portrait also. And some of them are very contemporary because when I look at that, actually, I mean, like four or five years ago, there was this fashion of shooting with hard flash against uh, a white wall, like Vice magazine, you know, this kind of New York type of photography. It's exactly the same thing. And for us, we look at the, camera, the photo, it looks kind of interesting, actually. But this photo was all shot because of the bit of the bra that we can see through the blouse, actually. That's what motivated this man to make and keep this photo after. When I, sp when I spoke about soft photography, that's the minority of the photos that I got, actually. Uh, the majority of the photos and the majority of the comments that I got actually from those forums are very strong. I mean, this, um, it's, um, in a way, I mean, it's disgusting. It's very aggressive. And there's a level of aggression actually in the photos, the way they are shot, the way they are put together. The comments also are very, very aggressive. So the first chapter, what I have shown you before, it's really like 10 or 5 percent of what I got. This is really what I got the maximum. Uh, they, I haven't touched up this photo. The defacing, that mask that uh, they have put on the top of a, a face is done by them. Um, it's one of the first photos that I collected from the net. I mean, at the beginning, at uh, the inception of the project. And when I got this photo, I knew that I wanted to do that. I wanted to really speak about it. W because I looked at that photo and just made me, reminded me actually of those women getting burned by acid uh, by their lovers. And that's exactly that. You look at it and it's very uncanny actually to see the parallels between our life in India, in our society and their digital way of handling it. I mean, the mentality that they have, I mean, this man, uh, he could have put, I mean, just a round or a sticker on top of it or whatever. But there's really, I mean, nothing is random, actually. I mean, you look at this photo, and there's really an act of defacing, I mean, a defacement, actually, making this woman ugly. And it's exactly the same mentality that the men in uh, South Asia do actually have when they burn the face of a lover, actually, because they have been rejected, they couldn't get married, uh, etc. I mean, for the film, just uh, re excuse right now, actually, women get burned by acid and they get defaced, actually, for life. And it's something which, I mean, makes me, I mean, I think it's the most horrendous thing that you can do to women, actually. And what they do here is exactly the same thing. But once again, through computer, I mean, using Photoshop or whatever software they have. And it's exactly the same mentality behind. I couldn't get you. I couldn't 
um, speak to you. I couldn't interact with you. I couldn't have sex with you, perhaps. So now I'm going to take my revenge and I'm going to make you ugly. Or this kind of visual, actually. And it's so strong in terms of message, of visual me message, of uh, graf graphic nature, actually, of the, this photo. I mean, the woman, the face of the woman disappear and become part of the wall. Basically, for them, what stays, actually, is a pair of breasts, actually. And, that's, and they do it so well. <laughs> and the miss, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to express that. I mean, but it's that accurate, actually. And it's nothing random. They are very accurate in the way they speak and express themselves. This photo, which I find very, very disturbing also, where uh, only the eyes are gone, and it's like small dots. I don't know if you can see it very well here, but it's like small dots, and they look like flies, actually, on top of the eyes. Once again, what I was speaking about, and there are a lot of photos of those acid burn women, and they look the same, actually. And it's all said there. I have a lot of people who tell me, yeah, whatever they do, I mean, they can't be so good. Um, it's random, I mean, it's... But you look at this photo, I mean, this guy took the, the time, actually, to paint over the eyes, to put red on top of the eyes, and then paint, I don't know, with whatever brush, and it looks really like scratches on the face of this woman. And that violence that women face every day here in India, I mean, it's there also, you see it. I mean, graphically, it's expressed uh, on the photo. And once again, well, that's, that's what I was saying initially also, because while working really on uh, this uh, fact of society, uh, this aggression also, I realized also that there was something interesting also for us photographers to look at also. Uh, because some of the visuals, some of the photos, I could have seen them in galleries. I mean, some of the visual strategies that those guys have found are very close to strategies that uh, I have seen in photo books, photo exhibitions, or even in the visual arts as well. And, um, and I think for us also to think about it, I mean, to see what they do. I, I work a lot on vernacular photography for me, Vernacular photography is very interesting and very important for us Indian photographers to look at actually what comes from the village actually in terms of graphic and that's exactly that. Uh, because those men are photographers like us. They are perverted, but they're photographers like us also. And they have a camera. And if you think about it also, they have exactly the same problems that we have. I mean, they have to represent, they have to shoot, photograph a body. They have to represent and speak about their sexuality. They have technical problems. And uh, some of the comments are kind of very close to what I could have read in uh, photo books, actually. Some guys will say, come closer to the subject. I mean, you're too far. Or change your camera. I mean, the photo are too blurred. They have ethical problems, which is very weird, actually, in that weird zone that they function because they speak about ethics also. And <laughs> they say, I mean, don't include ki kids in the photo. Uh, it's completely weird. But at the same time, it's interesting to uh, reflect upon, actually, and try to understand. Uh, for us also, for photographers, because I guess here there will be many photo photographers. And for me, it was very interesting to understand where they came from and to see the strategies that they have found and to see how close those strategies were to what, uh, to what we do actually as photographers. There's a painter called John Badelsari. Uh, I don't know if you know of him, but that's exactly what, I mean, it's very close to what Badelsari has done actually. Basically repainting the painter from the 70s and repainting photos and blocking out randomly parts of the photo so that you gaze and your eye just can't find the space actually to uh, ponder and stop. But that's exactly what uh, this man has done actually. Why he didn't crop the photo? He decided to paint over 
And then near to the, the woman, he painted in uh, pink. Then he removed the eye, etc. Some of the photos are once again quite striking in terms of proportion. Uh, the way this photo has been cropped out, the way, I mean, the pixelization, pixelization actually has been used, the usage of the noise also behind. Once again, I mean, um, this man who decided to paint over the wires and to find a kind of reson resonance between the wires and his uh, doodles. Here your eyes goes directly to the lips, actually. It's, uh, and for me, it's very uh, unnerving, actually. I mean, it makes me unset it's disturbing. It's unsettling, actually, because you have something which is very effective, uh, in a way also striking and beautiful, but it comes really from an ugly place, actually, in the mind. But still, there's no... Um, the beauty of some of the photos actually are not in proportion actually uh, with uh, uh, what happened in the head of this man who created this photo actually. That's very strong. I mean, you can't, as a message actually, just stamping out the face of this woman. Here, that's the same man who, he did, I don't think he photographed all the women, but decided to remove not only the face, but other marker, markers of uh, the identity of a woman, actually. And for him, removing the face wasn't good enough to remove, I mean, to, remove the, uh, to make this woman anonymous. But for him, the markers of an identity for woman, Indian woman, was more than that. It was more than the face. And if you see, he removed the Bengals, he removed uh, uh, the Mangal Sutra, uh, he removed even the keys, from, you know, which is on the sari, on the side. And once again, it's interesting to think about, I mean, about what he has done, actually, and for him, that for him, as Indian man, an identity, the identity of the woman is only the, not only the face, but it's all of that actually, or whatever she, she wears around. I found interesting to have, uh, to put together photos where uh, the action, the, um, the action of wireism is documenting directly by the, wi the wire, actually, when you have a kind of documentation of their own wireism by their own photo. And when you have this interaction between the photographer and the subject, like this one, actually, where you see that this woman has, knows what happened, actually, and she's protecting herself. She's putting the hand on her neck, actually, as a uh, gesture of protection. And uh, it's quite interesting also to look at this photo, knowing that most probably she wouldn't do more than that, actually. She knows what happened. Actually, a lot of women I speak to also know that they've been photographed on the street. But very rarely, they confront the, the men who photographed them. And that's really the reality of the streets right now in India, where when you've been harassed, actually, by somebody, as a woman, you don't really... I know a lot of women who do react very strongly, but it's, they are... It's always dangerous. You never know what's going to happen. So most of the women will kind of pass by, move on, go ahead, and keep it in their head, actually, that kind of frustration that they couldn't really react, actually. Um, see, there's something very important for me here. Um, we see it affects the woman. It affects us also. It happens to me a lot of time where the, my girlfriend or my wife where aggress on the street, and if you react right now in India, if you speak out actually, or you confront the person who has been uh, aggressing uh, the, the, the person with whom you are, you don't get any help. I mean, it's very rare when people help you actually. There's kind of uh, dismissal actually by the people around you, saying, yeah, they're kids, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, 
And you don't, I mean, that level of frustration that women have to face every day, um, we men also have to face the same level of frustration because it impacts us also. Uh, it happens to me a lot of time actually, where also I almost went into the verge of a fist fight, but I just felt so lonely. And uh, what happens right now on the streets to the women, it's not happen it doesn't happen only to the women. Actually, it happens to the men who share their life, actually. And the rage and the frustration is shared by everybody. And for me, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this project, actually, and really speak about that frustration and address it and uh, put it there, actually, so that people know and we can speak about it and document it. It's so prevalent that I haven't found in my 10,000 photo a voyeur shooting a woman and also shooting uh, somebody else, uh, one more voyeur actually. If you look at the small kid, I don't know if it's but they're on the top, and they are not connected, actually. Those, the small boy and the voyeur are not connected. But at the same second, I mean, this woman was shot by two different men. That prevalent. And they're not connected because I re-went through those photos and I've redone my edit. And the man who was shooting, I mean, the, the photo that from whom that we see, has been following those women for a while, actually. So those two, the small boy and uh, the, the, the wire, are not connected at all. The number also, the number, I mean, the, the people, the men who are looking at the, the women. Number one, two, three. For me, this portrait is uh, very important, actually. It's a beautiful portrait. Once again, I mean, I get back to the fact that there's a kind of connection, emotional connection with the photos, and uh, it's kind of weird, actually, that they can make visual that powerful, that you can connect so strongly to this photo. Uh, for me, this portrait is very important because you can read the fatigue in the eyes of this woman, actually. You can read that she's tired. I mean, you can read that she knows what's happening to her. But you read also that, I mean, enough. I mean, do whatever you want, photograph me or whatever, but let me be, actually. And you can read that fatigue. I mean, it's on, it's permanent. It's from morning to evening. And you can read that in the eyes, actually. I find it very interesting. Um, so I got a lot of photos of the two extremes of the fantasy as, uh, of the men, women, the modern women the women in power, the women who have education, the women with mobile phones, riding the scooter, and photos of the maid, washing the floor, washing their clothes. And I found it interesting to put them next one to, next, uh, one to each other. One more chapter in my work, because in India we live, moreover in Bombay, really, really live with our neighbors. And there's a huge chunk of the photos where, I mean, you have men shooting from one balcony to the next balcony, or one terrace from the next terrace. They're mainly done on DLS, DLS, uh, digital SLR. And, but I found it interesting because they're part of the same form, so I could include them in that work as well. And once again, that's kind of, uh, I mean, well composed. I mean, once again, you can get back to the fact that uh, the message is very well de delivered here. Now you speak about sexuality. Uh, so you get fetishism also. There's a huge chunk of the photos that I got which are linked to different fetish, uh, fetish uh, the feet, etc. So I put them together one after the other. Uh, once again, that's an amazing shot. 
And you know, I mean, on and on, I mean, for me it was really frustrating because on and on, I mean, I was getting, and uh, I mean, it's statistics, I know, because I got 10,000 photos and I have went to an edit of 100, but some of the photos are very, very, very strong also. And this photo of a foot is one of the strongest photos of a foot that I've seen, actually. And um, well, I'll speak about it later also, but that kind of dichotomy between the intent of a photo and the beauty of a photo. So it's very interesting to study through uh, the materials that I've collected. I got a lot of those photos where you had a kind of... Uh, when you look at the photo, you know why the guy had uh, shot the photo. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but I wasn't really understanding why they had to make a circle around or they had to use arrows. I never had a TV, actually. Most of my life, I never watched TV. And I spent a few months in a place where, with somebody who was watching a lot of TV, actually. And I realized, actually, um, the Hindi news channel, like hashtag and all of that, and they have a loop of 20 seconds of the same footage and they kind of loop it on and on and they show this arrow, I mean, from where it's fallen and all of that. <laughs> and it's exactly that. It's, uh, that's the same thing. And they copy it because, I mean, it's obvious that this man has shot because of the brass strap which is there. Uh, but what I find interesting, I mean, if you look, I mean, I mean it's, it's funny, but also, uh, once again, I mean, it's, here it's disconnected from the social part of it. So, I mean, it's connect disconnected from the aggression. I mean, it's more graphic. What I find very interesting, and once again getting back to the other axis of my work here, I mean, my understanding of this project, is uh, that there are not really, there are no boundaries in terms of visual aesthetic or creativity between, here is the newsroom from Bombay to the small village. Basically, both of them get influenced by the other. Here, they got influenced by what they had seen on the TV. And I would like to carry on my work in that direction. I mean, perhaps not with this project, with different projects. But I will, it will be quite interesting to see how vernacular photography, small town India photography, influences what we do as photographers or what we do, I mean, what's happening on the TV. I mean, this kind of, this kind of reverse exchange between the two worlds. And I find it very interesting as well. So that's the, the project. I didn't know how, I mean, this project stayed with me almost for four months. It was like that, in that shape. It was created. I didn't know what to do of it, actually, because it's very difficult um, to show it. I'm of foreign origin. I'm a man. And to speak about that and to be able to express myself accurately to convey what I had to say about the project, I found it very difficult. And I kept this project almost for four months with me without being able to show it to anyone. I, some of my friends had seen it, but that's it. I couldn't really put it uh, in the public platform, actually, and uh, get the, the people to look at it, actually. One of my friends came to me and said, perhaps your problem would be resolved if you create something out of it. If you... Um, I mean, as a photographer, you have created the work. You have to put, put it together. You gave a meaning to the photos. But perhaps for you, um, that problem, that issue that you have about working, uh, showing the work will be resolved if you create something out of it. So I decided to work on it and create a small movie, a small video. See, out of the 10,000 photos that I have here, I found photos of my friend. I found almost four or five friends. I'm quite sure if I show you, I show to any one of you the 10,000, you'll find people that you know, actually. And I started thinking about the fact that when you have a photo of yourself on the internet, uh, it will never disappear. The photo that you have, I mean, of you walking on the street, or any photo of you actually will be there as long as the internet exists. Right now, we're facing in a digital age uh, a dilemma where, which we never had before uh, through prints. The more you reproduce a print, a paper print, I mean, you print it, you re-photograph it, you xerox it, 
there will be a degradation to it. And ultimately, it might even disappear. On the internet, the more you copy and paste, the more you hotlink a photo, the more you decimate, decimate uh, a photo actually on the internet, the stronger this photo will be. And uh, for me, it's kind of disturbing actually. And those photos of the woman that I have here never really disappear. I mean, I mean, if you really want to make it disappear, it will be impossible. So my intention behind this movie was to have a kind of an act of redemption to make the photo uh, remove them, I mean, from existence, degrade them actually. And I wanted to use the tools that those men, the wires, used the mobile phone. So I bought two cheap mobile phones from the street at 500 or 600 rupees. I made a small slideshow uh, of five minutes of 100 photos. And I have played this um, film onto a mobile, on the screen of a mobile, recorded it once again with a different mobile. The film that I recorded once, I will play it once again and record it, play it and record it, play it and record it. Actually, the, um, the kind of iteration of deg degradation, actually. I play it once on the screen, record it with a different mobile. The film that I record, I play it twice, record it thrice, and on and on and on. And you have iteration of degradation. Um, so basically, there's a way for me to make those photos disappear. So the movie that you're going to see right now is like going through uh, that degradation. I move every 10 seconds from one iteration to the next iteration to the next one. And what you see at the beginning, the photos are sharp. And throughout the movie, they get degraded through that kind of iteration of playing and recording. And I have put, which is for me very important, I have put the text from the forums. So basically, I have copied and pasted and got it spoken by the computer, the text from the forum. Uh, because it's very important for me, because when you look at the photo here, I mean, you don't, you're not really aware of the violence of uh, the text. In India, we are very verbal uh, and very good in speaking, and the text, which is from the forum, uh, it's a very strong and very aggressive and, uh, text. So it's spoken there and once, de once again degraded the same way. Uh, the text is kind of hard, so, I mean, there are a lot of abuses, but we can go through it. Fuck it. Fuck me on road. Sex capture with hot anti back in yellow sari with bra strap out. You fucked her asshole last night while she is walking like this. Fuck at sight, fantastic character's body, especially that lady in black top, showing a handful cleavage in post number 77, felt like starting my tongue on everything, and that lovely girl in sky blue in post number 79 and 84 is so hot and sexy, body. She's very, very hot and horny. What a pair of lovely kids capture. Bunny. Wow, what a big pointer ball of hockey can set me in Calabar. If I could tap them on the road. Why do I be sexy and capture a man's side and keep her side in the wood? I'd love to be big at me. Thick, mature, ripe Indian ass are the best for hunting in London. Sex 
to watch well-fucked married middle-aged women walking on the street with their ripened, fully developed juicy big butts jiggling under the saris. These are the heavenly scenes you should never miss. So that's the, that's the movie. When I had that movie, I knew I had the project and I could really uh, show it around. I mean, there was something that I had created out of, I mean, there's an act of creation from my side with this, uh, those photos. Uh, for me, what was important also was that the text also was spoken and heard. Uh, and both of the message that I had and the two axes of work that I had about this work were taken care of, actually. The one which is Really, you can hear and see the violence of the, those men. And also, there's a research on uh, the graphic form of it and the aesthetic of it, which was there, actually. Because for me, both of them are important. I don't want one to disappear against the other. Uh, when I show this work uh, in India, and women, and women connect with it. They understand where it comes from. But when I go to abroad, actually, and to, to Europe, I mean, most of the men there, were, they're going to love. And they say, ah, oh, it's nice photos and all of that, but they're going to miss uh, the sheer violence that uh, exists here and which is behind those photos, actually. So for me, it's very important to have that. It's kind of act of closure for me for the project. I haven't gone back to the forums. I don't want to get back there. I mean, four months looking and reading the whatever was there was enough for me. And uh, I knew at that time when I had a movie, I could really show it around. And this has been shown in the gallery. I have given conferences about it that's been printed. There are a lot of articles written about it. So it's a project which is there now and exists. So I don't know. I'm uh, done here. Hi, Fabian. Hi. I am it. Uh, thank you so much for such a provocative work. And uh, my question is about your last piece. And I was wondering when, when, when you show your work, uh, uh, do you show this video along with the printed images? Yeah, that's what I had done in Bombay, actually, in Chatterjee yeah. and Lal. Yeah. The exhibition had uh, photos on the wall, and I had two movies. And for, the, for me, the movie is very important, more of a, in a uh, space like a gallery where I'm not always there and when I cannot always speak about the work. I mean, this work, if you look only at the photo, they look so benign, actually, that they can be misunderstood and misread. So for me, the, if there's not, I mean, in the gallery, you can't have a long test, text. If it was in the form of a book, I could get people to write about it, actually. And I would really like to have a book published on that, actually, uh, and get writers to write about, uh, I mean, social activists, women, to write about it. Uh, but there, in a gallery uh, space, I really need to have that movie to be uh, played because people do understand where those photos come from and why they have been created. Yeah, but my question then is that why move into this degree of, 
to this degree of abstraction because on one hand you have something that is so formulaic and then you are moving into this abstraction and uh, you are using also different forms. So what kind of interplay is that you are looking at? It's not a different form because uh, I looked at what I have done here actually. It's uh, very close to photography. I don't see it, I mean, I mean, yeah, that's a video, but I mean, it's closer to photography than video. I have used a slideshow and I've degraded the slideshow actually. So it's not really creating moving image. I mean, the images have been created on their own. On. And if you look at the photo actually, I mean the, the video, uh, actually I got very pissed off actually. It took me a day to create the video. And I thought at the end of the video, I will cr get a kind of uh, fog of information. I mean, where I'll get a video, I mean, a degradation where there's no photo anymore. There's nothing, I mean, only a white noise. And if you look at the end of the video, it's the opposite. Because after this kind of iteration of playing and recording, it stabilizes and you have those tens of color which move on the, on the screen. It's as if I have given a life to those photos, actually. I've, as if I have refined the essence of those photos and the evil which is behind those photos. I mean, that's why I got very frustrated, actually, after my day of doing this experiment. I got the opposite, what I wanted, and it's as if I had given a life to those photos and really refined uh, all the bad uh, of those photos, actually. And once again, what I have done here is an act of a photographer, more than an act of a videographer. Uh, it's really speaking about photography, really speaks about uh, the essence of a photograph as well. Just last quick one, yeah. and where is the sound come from? Did you record the it? The sound is, yeah, sorry, I was a bit distracted before uh, speaking about it. The sound is, uh, first the words are part of a thread. Uh, it's a text that I have collected from one single thread. Uh, the sound is created by a Mac, that's a synthetic uh, voice. And the degradation of the voice also is the same thing, of playing and recording and replaying and recording, etc. So it's exactly the same thing. And I wanted to have uh, um, ambient sound from Bombay, where uh, places where, as a woman, you can feel intimidated, uh, where the aggression is more uh, possible. Crowd, um, park and a uh, deserted uh, street. Actually, it's really uncanny, but uh, when I recorded the sound of the park in the middle, I mean, almost at the end of the video, I got myself aggressed, actually. I went into a fight, actually, at that time. And those are the places where, as a woman, you won't really uh, spend much time, actually, and you uh, go through very quickly. So I found it interesting to put them in that video. Hi, I'm Hello. Ritika. Uh, I wanted to ask if when you went to these forums, uh, did you find any women who were also on those forums? No, there are no women. So um, how? See, it's very difficult to know because they all have akas. They don't have their real name. It's a forum, so they can change. And even if you have a woman's name, most probably it's a man who wants to kind of, I don't know, somehow attract more uh, reading or whatever because of the usage of her. But it's mainly for men. And those forums are really for young Indian men, actually. Um, the photos are shot, I'm quite sure, not only by young Indian men. The forums are read by young Indian men. But what I have seen from the photos, uh, you get a bit of everything, actually, of India. It's really pan-India and pan, I mean, throughout the classes of India. Uh, and the same thing in the forums. I mean, it's uh, people from all over India. But I'm quite sure there's no woman going there. But how, how does it happen? Like, why do, why do women not land up there and only men land up there? <laughs> I, uh, will you go there? And I mean, I spent four months on those forums, and it's not a nice place to be. And I'm quite sure as a woman, you don't... I mean, perhaps, I mean, out of curiosity, and if you want to understand, you can go there. I mean, but those are preoccupations which are really... I mean, pornography uh, as such actually is mainly used by men. And women more and more have access to pornography, and it's pornography made for women also. But it's uh, mainly uh, men based actually. It's for the men. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no problems. Uh, Hi. Uh, my question is uh, in two parts basically, but they're connected. Um, 
you mentioned i'd like to go back to the event where your friend mm -hmm. at the mumbai cafe was being photographed so her concern was that she was being photographed without her permission or initially without her knowledge as well so like do you think there's a difference to her to the subjects of these photographs do you think there's a difference um, in the terms of who's taking the photograph is it being taken by a pervert who's who's who will be using these photographs in these forums like you mentioned the burning out the faces on all the perversions that we've seen or by someone like say Gary Winogrand putting a book on women are beautiful or like Daido Moriyama chasing that woman down that s backyard alley so the concern of the object of this photo the subject of these photographs that they are being photographed without their permission so do you think there's a difference or uh, uh, and my second part of the question like i if i remember correctly please uh, I, i apologize if i if i'm quoting it wrong that i've read somewhere uh, in that book by john berger he says that men look at women and women watch themselves being looked at so how do you think that idea fits fit into this context okay the first part actually uh without the permission i mean it's very difficult actually because um now i'll get back to me and as a photographer because i photograph also and the um, <coughs> uh, previous project was about men and uh and it was kind of sexual not sexual actually but i mean i was photographing body and the fact that body was beautiful also i started photographing also women at the same time also and it was kind of kind of tiny sexual intent but at the same time i'm not a perverted man also and i didn't do it because i wanted to put it in the forum uh the photos that i have seen there in the, in the forums are very, very close to what i had shot actually and uh it was uh very disturbing uh at third this project now i can't really speak about generals i mean that's your decision where you want to use photography and camera but i stopped shooting uh, people on the street actually because i mean you have a very tiny fine difference i mean you don't know actually how the photo is going to be used where it's going to be used and even if it's my own photography and i go and photograph somebody without uh i would do it a lot and more in india it's so easy because you can go and you kind of feel free and can photograph everybody um and without the permission of somebody it's something that i do less and less and uh it disturbs me more and more actually but at the same time uh in photography if people were not photographing uh i mean they they had to get the permission or where they were when they were they, they were photographing i mean will you will we lose huge chunk of photography amazing documentation also so right now i'm just speaking at a personal level uh then i mean it's everybody's decision and the way they understand for my friend um she has a woman here in india you always on your under uh i mean you know that if you have a random man shooting you with a mobile phone on the, on the street i mean it's not going to end up in the art book most probably and uh you always under i mean uh on your guards and you know very well i mean uh what i have seen with most of the women i have shared my life here in india i mean it's uncanny they really have a radar they know they map they know who is behind who is on the right who is on the left i mean and uh and then she knew she knew what the guy had in mind you spend your whole life actually from the age of 5 6 under that guess i mean you have antennas you really know what's going to happen even even if it's a new technology and that's very disturbing actually that right now in india i mean technology and it comes back to christopher pinis talk also i mean can be used uh i mean it's no more utopian utopian actually dystopian uh use uh against us and that technology i mean there's i mean you go from a stare from a comment from getting groped getting touched molested if teasing rap and now the technology brings one more uh layer to it which is uh getting photographed which is <laughs> i don't know i mean there's no end to it uh but i guess now i mean right now what i see right now in india is we kind of somehow 
slowly perhaps going to be able to fix that problem. I'm seeing that it's going to take min I mean, one or two generations, but perhaps that balance. Because right now what I've documented here with that pro project is that unbalance in terms of power uh, on the street level. And that balance, I guess, will get back to normal very soon in India. But I mean, technology has introduced something else, actually, that the women have to be wary of. And that's the way it is. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, I'm Munish. Uh, I just wanted to know uh, what was the primary intent behind uh, curating and compiling these works? Was it to bring out this uh, side of Indian masculinity, or was it to see the use of uh, new media to you know, serve rather disturbing ends, or anything else, if there was anything? See, whatever I do in my projects, one project leads to the next project, etc. Whatever uh, solutions I have found in one project will be used for the next one. Here, my prime intent was to speak about sexuality and uh, to speak about transgression. For me, it was a reaction also to what I had to live. Once again, I stress to the point, I mean, because uh, it's um, the stance I have is a feminist stance, and I can be having a feminist uh, point of view, being a man, because that frustration, that level of frustration that I see among the women around me also, I share it. And for me, speaking about it, even if I have foreign origin, but something which impacts me a lot, and I really wanted to speak about it and to address it. Now, the new media uh, for me was a discovery. I never thought that in my artistic practice I'll be sp using those. And now if you go to my uh, show that I'm showing right now during uh, DPF at the Alliance Francaise, I'm using also uh, strategies and solutions that I have developed, mainly during this movie, the, the, the small video that I've shown you, I developed way of understanding uh, the usage of uh, the new medias, the internet. Uh, I have a questioning also about which is very linked to this project, actually, because right now we are facing an abundance, a tsunami of photographs, and what to make out of it, actually, out of it as photographers, uh, the sense. I mean, I think as photographers, we can give a sense of all those photos being created every day. There's 1.5 billion photos created every day. Uh, now you look at some of the photos which were shot in a small village in somewhere in Madhya Pradesh, somehow ended up to be shown here uh, during a DPF talk. It's kind of interesting to see that some photo survives. So uh, initially, that was mainly to document that fact, which is very important for me. But it made me think also on how I could use uh, the new media, uh, the internet, uh, the visual machineries, uh, to see whatever I do actually right now is to um, uh, use the, those new media, the, the visual technologies available to help to document the field that I'm uh, documenting. But if you go to the exhibition, you'll understand better because it's there and it's uh, a bit more easy to understand. Okay, for, sorry. Um, I've seen the photos before, but I saw this movie for the first time. And very frankly, I'm a little confused about what to think, about how I react to it. Because uh, at one level, I think it works brilliantly because the dissonance that you've created by the intermingling of the images and the steady degradation of, and of the sound uh, does symbolize the image getting destroyed and the kind of redemption that you want personally. But at one level, I'm also reminded of a few other things. I'm reminded of a few, few other factors. I, I thought the sound was very inspired by a movie of, maybe not by you, but it reminded me of a movie I've seen called Daisies. Uh, it's a Czechoslovakian movie. And, um, you know, the problem was, as, as the image started getting more degraded, I started seeing more things. Because that's the way the human mind works, that the more abstract something gets. And Amit also uh, spoke about why use abstraction. At one level, I thought, wow, this is brilliant. But at one level, I also felt a little disturbed. And I, rem I was reminded of uh, Antonioni's movie, Blow Up, mm -hmm. where a photographer is blowing up an image uh, for whoever has not seen the movie. He blows up the image further and further uh, and then starts seeing things in it. He starts believing that a murder has taken place. Well, when has I wonder, no, but I wonder uh, what's uh, his intent. I mean, I'm, I'm very curious as to... No, but that's... Uh, <laughs> I was just very curious as to what's his intent. Uh, 
very confused, which is why, I mean, what do you think about it? Well, I do agree, actually. I mean, it's not abstraction, actually. That's what I was saying to Amit. Uh, and I got very frustrated at the end of that uh, experiment, actually, because I got completely the opposite. Uh, this, the way I look at those stains of colors and whatever you look into it, for me, it's uh, not uh, comfortable. I mean, what I look in—I mean, when I look at those, actually, I'm seeing more things. Actually, I'm seeing exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do initially. And uh, I tell you, I mean, I was very, very pissed off at the end of the day when I seen what I had on the screen. Actually, I got exactly the opposite of what I wanted. But that was the process, and that's what was created at the end. And perhaps because of that process, uh, what I created had a meaning. And for me, the meaning is really I have refined, I have distillated. I mean, it's an abstraction also, but there's uh, a tangible meaning to it, actually, because I've really refined and distillated what those photos were made of, actually. I mean, I look at photography and uh, the new media, the digital photography, the internet, in kind of a spiritual way. And um, that I'll get back later, perhaps, in one more talk. But uh, there's something very spiritual about the way those photos, from being sharp, get degraded and stabilized, and it becomes organic, as, as if I have given life to those stains of color which move around. And it's really as, as if I have refined the evil and the bad behind those photos. That's the way I see it. Hi. I'm having a very different kind of a very strange reaction, but mm -hmm. a very strong one. So mm -hmm. I have a request also with mm -hmm. it. Um, one is that I was hit, of course the work is disturbing and everything, but I was hit the way, um, and maybe it's my conditioning speaking, I'm conservative, maybe I'm just mm -hmm. realizing mm -hmm. it now. The way Indian men and in India is being used is hitting me more than this. and. Uh, being a woman, of course, we all have experience. Maybe I have my photograph there. I don't mm -hmm. deny that. Mm -hmm. I would much rather make it a broader thing and say men, if I would say. You know, because I'm kind of new to photography mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. just watching some photographs mm -hmm. today and uh, there was this Bresso photograph, which is a man lying uh, with a hard on. And uh, Sorry? there's a man lying, man lying in a frontal pose mm -hmm. with a hard on. Yeah. And this is clicked by Brasso, I think. It was mm. a small picture, so I couldn't see clearly. But I'm saying, if we say across countries, mm -hmm. I would appreciate it. And uh, especially I realized mm. my discomfort when you said that uh, you showed it to your European friends. Mm. And uh, the I would not like it to be, oh, Indian men are like this. Okay, uh, that's exactly why it took just me Just one more thing, um, it's not a question mm -hmm. actually, it's mm -hmm. just my reaction. very strong yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would request you to be a little sensitive about using Indian men and India. If you say men, like that girl was asking, did you see women? So I would much rather believe there are sites and uh, believe me, we maybe fantasize it, there are guys who do it. So s and mm -hmm. across. I would much rather believe that to be true and I would request maybe if you can add a little bit of general thing to it and not make it country specific. Okay, so basically that's why I kept this project for four months because I live here. This is my country. I've been here 15 years. I can speak about Indian men the way I want. Um, this project exists in India. I haven't got any photo from outside. I didn't get photos from Japan. I'll speak about my life here. And we all live in India. I can say men, but men in India. This project exists only because it's India. Um, I, have a I, I, can, here. I can be. Wo sorry? I have a suggestion here. Yeah. Uh, maybe the disclaimer can start with because I narrowed down my research to a porn site from India. Because I'm sure your research material is coming from internet and that gives you an access to the world. You know? So whether you live but in India speak, or you stay in anywhere, I, live, I, I, I can just. No, but just, just, to say, just to say one thing yeah, on that, because it's a bit difficult. Uh, I might be white, but I can speak about my life. I can speak about uh, what happens to me. I've been here 15 years. I speak Hindi. And I know I will get this kind of reaction, actually. I was bracing myself for those. Uh, it depends on where I speak. And uh, there's nothing wrong, I mean, to say Indian men. I mean, we have a problem. We face it. And be, me being a foreign origin, I can 
help people here to face it. I mean, we have a problem right now of aggression. We'll face it. I mean, that's it. This project is about India. So the men who have photographed those foot, I mean, those women are Indian. I mean, I can say men if it helps you to feel better. But what I don't want is uh, that if I were Indian and my name was uh, Prakash or whatever, Ajay. No, no, no. I don't. I just okay. Let me just put because there's no time. I think we both we'll need to look later. at things. Yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. both need to just look into ourselves. But yeah. we have to address that that problem. I mean, it's not being like that with the words. I mean. There are Indian men who have it's shot the photos. It's not about words. We'll take it outside. Take it. Thank you. Yes. Do you want these people to be punished, or you just want to create an awareness about it? Sorry. Uh, w yeah. Uh, do you want? See, I've been asked. Actually, there was uh, Deepan Janapal, who uh, is a writer, feminist, also. We spoke about it actually, and she asked me, uh, I mean, what's the way ahead actually? And what we agreed on actually, this work is not. Uh, I'm not an activist actually, and what. What can we do about it in our society? It's not up to me. I'm an artist. For me, it's a reaction. I react to it. I react to what I see. I react to what I feel. Uh, in terms of punishment, in terms of what can we do about that in our society, it's not my. Uh, it's my concern as a citizen, but it's not the the subject of this uh, this work. And we have activists. We have people who work on that actually. Uh, we have uh, legislation, we have, I mean, a very good uh, legislation actually in India who can handle that later on. For me, it's to document. For me, what's important is to react and to document what's happening here. Yeah. I would like to have, I would really like to get this work published and uh, have uh, a woman actually to write about it. It will be interesting because. I'm a man. I mean, it will be interesting to have a woman who works there, uh, an activist, uh, uh, a woman activist who can really speak about it. And I would like to have somebody also uh, to write about the graphic part of it, which is very important also in that work. Hi, Fabia. Hi. So I was just wondering, um, given the non-consensual nature of these images and the context in which they were taken and spoken about, how do you personally as someone who does seem to be making a moral judgment, um, justify further exhibiting them, particularly given that you've chosen not to black out the faces. Yeah, I've chosen that. Uh, I've been asked that before, actually, uh, because me showing the photos, it doesn't make sense for me to remove the face because they have done it also. But why do I have to use photos of uh, the, the woman, actually? It's kind of propagating. I mean, the scene and whatever has been done before. But that's a problem also that we have also... Uh, I'm not a photojournalist, but photojournalists have, uh, I mean, showing the face of victims also uh, in a newspaper. I mean, why? I mean, now more, more and more, I mean, we, they blank out the face of the victim. Um, right now, what I'm doing, I mean, I'm, see, I mean, there's no nudity. Um, you look at it, at those faces, at those photos in uh, the, the, the porn website, I mean, that's very demeaning, that's degrading. But what I'm doing here is, in a way, I'm reversing the, t I mean, the way it's shown. Uh, from a victim, actually, uh, I'm putting it, those photos, I mean, there are very few photos of a woman that you can see, uh, can recognize the face. Uh, I'm putting them in a different platform. Ultimately, I mean, that's a debate also, that's what I've said in photojournalism. I mean, leaving the face of the people or the victims, I mean, do we have to remove the face and make, making them anonymous? But I'm not doing it with a, the same intent that was done before. And, uh, I didn't shoot the photo also. I'm putting them in a different uh, background and condition. And also, um, we have to speak about it. I mean, we have to broach the subject. I mean, we have to start. Uh, and we have to say, I mean, that's what's happening in our country, and that's what's happening in India, and with Indian men also. And we have to not to, uh, we have to speak about it and show it. Uh, that was my problem at the beginning, and I knew this question will come also, and will come on and on as long as I will show the, the, the project. But I decided to have the courage to show those photos and say, I mean, that's, that's what's happening. And saying that it's about time we speak about it. Uh, for me, that's, this project is very important because um, now we speak about all the rape and the, the rape case. 
uh, that was done before, but this project, I mean, if you look at it in terms of photography, in terms of what's written about it, it's really documentation what in, because I mean, if you have a rape, I mean, how do you document the rape actually? How do you speak about it? I mean, you can go later on in the space where, or you can make a photo or, but here, I mean, you really document what's happening in their head. And uh, you document their fantasy, the way they understand women, the way they understand the relationship between the sexes. It's all documented there. And for me, I think this documentation is very important. And one more thing also, I guess before we stop, uh, this project is not really my project. Because whenever I show it to people, and that's why I like to speak about it, there's one new layer coming on, to, uh, on top of it. And the discussion, that, and it's very long actually, the, docu the discussion that we have about the project, brings more information into that project. Like last time in Bombay when I shown it, I don't know if you realize, but none of the women were skimpy uh, clothes. They all wear saris and salva kameez. And now you have all those men and politicians saying, yeah, the, the women of our generation, they attract uh, rape and they attract digression because of the way they're dressed. I mean, that's bullshit. I mean, look at those photos. None of them. I mean, they all wear saris and salva kameez. They all wear uh, conservatively, actually, this. and that's very interesting. And whenever I speak about it, I'm getting more information. And it's very much a project which doesn't really belongs to me; it belongs to people who want to add on to that. Actually, so that's why I th think it's interesting and important that it is shown and spoken about. Thank you. something that I connect a lot with. Um, I do understand and I do share also the difficulty that is to be a woman right now in India. The fact that the gaze of the Indian male on the street level affects you so much, affects the woman, affects us also, the boyfriends or the husbands. Um, it affects the way women understand their body, the way they love their body, the, understand their own sexuality. And for me, it's really important to speak about that. So I'll start here with the first photo. What I wasn't prepared with actually also, I mean, before really going, I'm sorry, I'm speaking a bit before because it's very important. This project was, it's a bit difficult to show in front of the crowd because it's a bit of a, a dangerous topic actually. So I'd rather speak before and then we can go through the visual. Um, this project also, I wasn't really prepared because some of the photos are beautiful and they are kind of well composed also. So on, um, there are two ways of looking at this project actually and both of them are equally important for me. The first is um, speaking about this the, the degradation towards the woman. The second also what I have found out actually, and you'll see and we'll develop that subject later on when we look at the photos. It's uh, also speaking about photography and vernacular photography and speaking about the way they use their camera because uh, imagine I have 10,000 photos and some of the photos are very close to what we do as photographers. And what I have realized actually um, Looking at those photos, uh, it's like an empirical laboratory of photography. It's like trial and error. One guy will find a way of photographing and it will be copied and on and on and on. So, and now we can start looking at the photos. See, here, when I was speaking about what they do and what we do in street photography, and uh, it's, it's very uncanny, actually, because uh, the strategies that they have developed on their own, I mean, that group of guys shooting women on the street is very close to the strategies which were developed for street photography, actually. Now, if you look at that, I mean, you can see, I'm quite, I can imagine that man waiting for uh, those two women to pass in front of the bikini, uh, the, the, the model in bikini, actually. And that kind of transposition of idea between the half-naked foreign woman and the boca clad woman also. And at the same time, it's a kind of interesting shot. The cropping is done by them. I haven't touched up 
the photos, uh, whatever you see, random, actually, uh, for the visuals. Uh, I started search, I mean, it was not good enough for me, actually. I mean, because it was completely disconnected from the reality of our society, of the Indian society. So I started searching further. And I found um, forums. There are a lot of forums right now in India meant for young men uh, where they're going to exchange about their private life, about problems at home, etc. They're going to exchange about gadgets, mobile phone, um, Bollywood. And in those forums, you have a huge porn section, actually, where they're going to. And porns are very, uh, porns. forums are very interesting because forums. Basically, I don't know if you've been in any forum, actually, you have a thread. Somebody starts a thread with a subject, and people reply to it. And there, I found those photos, those candid photos. And they were all there. There were a lot of them, actually. And it was amazing, actually. It was very interesting for me, because I really had the background. Uh, I could get into their mind. I mean, one man will put a photo of that he shot somewhere in, uh, in his village, and people will react to it, and they write about it or they react to it with a different photo. And really, I mean, in terms of um, getting the background of their way of thinking and why they were doing it and how they were doing it, for which purpose, I had everything there in those forums. So I started, I mean, it lasted almost four months where I started collecting the photos, one after the other. I collected 10,000 photos, it's a huge, um, it was very grueling, actually, very difficult four months, because I was really with those men. I was really living, reading uh, what they had to write, actually, about the photos. But I did it, and I collected 10,000 photos, which I put together as a body of work. And this body of work is um, a body of work of a photographer. I don't see, I mean, see, for this project, I haven't shot any photo, but I still work as a photographer. It's really my expression. That's my way of un understanding photography, camera, etc. So the project that I'm going to show you uh, is an edit, a curation of those 10,000 photos put together in chapters uh, with a bit of meaning behind also in order for us to understand um, what's happening right now in our society actually and this uh, aggression that the women have to face every day. This project was done before the rape case, actually. It was done two and a half years ago, actually. Now it's even more contemporary because of what's happening. Uh, but it was done before that. But for me to speak about the transgression towards women uh, in the street level, in their daily life, is very important, actually. See, it's as it is, actually. What I have done is sometimes remove the noise to make it printable, but that's it. Once again, in terms of composition, I wasn't really ready, actually, to see these kind of visuals, actually. Some of them are very, very powerful. And it's, uh, in a weird way, very disturbing for me to see that they use the camera very well. And it's... Uh, <laughs> And it's kind of uh, inherent beauty to those photos. Um, you look at this photo, actually, you'll see, I mean, most of the photo doesn't have much nudity, actually. They are part of pornographic forums, but there's hardly any, I mean, I have perhaps one photo of a cleavage that will be the maximum. And some of the photos, I mean, seem so random, actually, they're shots from so far. I mean, here I don't, I mean, you, visually, when you look at this photo, there's nothing sexual in it here. But what you have to understand and what I have understood while reading the forum, while uh, reading what they had to write about it, actually, is for them, uh, taking a, a photo of a woman on the street, the act of stalking a photo, the, uh, a photo, a woman, sorry, the act of taking a photo against somebody's will, is uh, for them like a sexual act. For them, they write about it, actually. The act of taking a photo of a woman on the street is a sexual act. And for them, it's as much as important than the, the result, actually. But really, inv invading the privacy of somebody, getting into somebody's uh, intimacy, is for them a sexual act that they can't do otherwise, but they do it through the camera. 
So once again, I mean, as photographers, I mean, it's kind of interesting the way they use the cameras also. Uh, a lot of the photo, uh, the intent behind shooting the photo is really uh, very close to a rep, actually. It's like a visual rep, something that they won't do vis physically, but they do it by the proxy of a camera. And here, that's exactly that. But at the same time, you have photos which are very evocative also and very powerful. What I have understood also and seen through the forums and looking at the photos and looking at the writing and the comments, uh, for them, you had two types of women, actually. You have the women that they interact with daily, the women of the household, the women, uh, the sister, the wife, uh, the mother, and then you have the woman from outside, the unknown woman. So here in this chapter, I'm putting uh, photos of uh, where the actuals are photographing, um, but I couldn't get the thing right, actually. I couldn't do it well. Um, I just found, I mean, I could understand very well where they're coming from in terms of sexuality, actually. I mean, I speak Hindi, I interact a lot with the people from the country also, but creating a visual myself, photographing it, was a bit of a fallacy, actually. I mean, there was a lot of my own sexuality that I was projecting onto the visuals. And I didn't make many, I mean, much pictures, actually. So I kind of reached a dead end here. I didn't know where to go, actually. I knew I wanted to deal with that project, but I didn't know where to go ahead. Uh, at the same time, in Bombay, um, it happened uh, with a friend of mine who was sitting outside in a restaurant, and she told me, look at this man. He's taking a photo of me with his mobile phone. I remember we confronted, confronted him. We went, we erased the picture from the mobile phone. But at that time, it's, I just found it a bit weird, actually, because this man was almost four or five meters away from my friend. And there was, in terms of voyeurism, there was nothing much there, actually, to photograph. Uh, it happened many more times, actually. I'm a fashion photographer also. It happened during uh, one of my shoots when one of the light men also photographed a friend of my model. On and on and on, I heard the stories of women getting photographed with mobile phone on the street. So I found it interesting because here I had uh, my project, actually. In a way, I mean, those men photographing women on the street were expressing and dealing uh, with their sexuality, with their mobile phone, with their camera. So I found it very interesting, and I was curious to look at those pictures, to see how they were photographing those women, how they were expressing their sexuality. Whatever happens now in the digital age, I mean, photos created, photos are generated with cameras or mobile phone, end up on the internet. I mean, right now the internet is a huge reservoir I mean, it's like a huge uh, cold storage of uh, digital visuals, actually. And those photos shot on the street with a mobile phone will find their way, actually, on the internet. So I started searching. I mean, it's quite easy, actually. You go on Google, you type wire, uh, streets, India, etc. You learn to know that they call those type of photos candids. It's candid photography for them which is very interesting because it's very close to what we do uh, as street photographers. And so I found very quickly Indian porn website where you had photo of women shot on the street and it was all mixed with uh, other type of visuals, any type of photography actually. I mean, in terms of editing, porn website is a bit of Um, so I'm very glad to be here. I'm very glad to be at the second issue of uh, Daily Photo Festival. I'm very happy also to, also to see uh, a lot of people from Bombay, a lot of familiar faces. Really nice to see that the Bombay crowd is here. <laughs> There's so much things happening right now in Bombay. Actually, you should check the photographers actually who are coming up right now from the city. It's amazing. It's uh, vibrant actually, and a uh, lot of good. Uh, Nice photography coming from, the, from Bombay. Um, yeah, I've been here almost a bit less than half of my life. I've been in India for 15 years. I've learned photography here in India 
with Prabhu Dodas Gupta. Actually, I used to assist him when he used to live in Bangalore. Um, when it comes to my artistic pra practice, when it comes to my photography, I feel very much Indian, actually. Whatever I have done, whatever I have learned in photography is from India, actually. And the subjects that I deal with, uh, I guess also the way I express myself through photography, uh, in a way, actually, I think is a bit Indian. Um, so I'm going to take, I mean, this is my second project. The one which is shown as a solo show at the, the Alliance Francaise is my, is my third project. And my first project was done four, year, four years ago. Um, four years ago, I decided to speak. Oh, yeah, before that, sorry, I'm a bit uh, uh, lost. Whatever I do in my projects, whatever I deal with, whatever I speak about, actually, in my artistic practice as a photographer, deals with uh, the small town India, deals with uh, the villages, uh, what I call, I mean, I'm using an Urdu word for that, which is the move fossil. Um, it's basically where uh, I find that uh, it's a place in India where, I mean, it's not very well documented. When it's documented through the arts and through photography, it's uh, through this, its extremes. And what I want to do, actually, what I want to say through my art, actually, it's to speak about the mundane, the daily life, I mean, what's happening uh, every day. Um, my first project was on the uh, men, the body of the Indian men, actually, living in the Mufusil. Um, I find them, in a weird way, actually, uh, very sensuous. Uh, the way they use their body, uh, that wealth that they have in the usage of their body is uh, very interesting. So that was the project that I've done four years ago. And from this project, I wanted to speak from their sensuality, the, I mean, being, them being sensuous. I wanted to speak about their sexuality and the way they express their sexuality, the relationship between the sexes also, which is very interesting. So I started working on it, creating visual.